It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship again, Mr. Howarth, and uh, congratulations to um, the Honourable Member for Poplar and Limehouse for securing uh, the debate. It's good to see him again. A Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, he has impeccable timing in doing so. I'm not sure he knew that when he put in for it, but uh, he has great timing in, in getting stuff published. So if you could let me know how he managed that, I'd be very grateful. Um, he, he and uh, everybody talked about cancer survival rates, and you know the, the, the truth is that they have never been higher, and they've increased year on year over the last decade or so. But you know the, the, the reason for that is yeah, investment, of course, and policy decisions made by the last government and by this government. But you know, as, as my shadow said. The real reason for that is because of the hard work of the staff up and down the NHS in our country who work tirelessly over and above to, to give cancer patients the care and the compassion that they need. So I just place on record, as maybe wasn't said enough yesterday in the chamber, my, my thanks to them. But, you know, we're not in the slightest bit complacent about that. Um, at the end of the day, one death from cancer still devastates somebody's life and somebody's family's life. Um, and we want to do, we know there's so much more that we need to do to ensure that we deliver the world-class cancer outcomes in England that, that all of us want and expect for our constituents. And, and the member for Poplar and Limehouse in introducing the debate sort of set the tone really when he talk, talked about workforce, didn't he? And he said that that was really the, I suppose, the rock in a way around which you build the, build the church. So, so, I'll, so I'll start with that. I mean, where we can't prevent cancer, and I'll come on to that, we must ensure that we've got the right staff with the appropriate skills to, and the expertise to ensure that the patients receive the best care. And the NHS is nothing without its 1.3 million staff, and it's the biggest um, employer of, of, of trained staff in the world. Um, so in 2017, HEE did publish the first ever cancer workforce plan, and what we... Um, we set out ambitious plans to expand the capacity and the skills of the NHS cancer workforce, um, committing to 200 additional clinical endoscopists and 200 already committed to and an extra 300 reporting radiographers by 2021. But obviously, having set out our new ambitions for cancer in uh, the party conference speech by the Prime Minister and then uh, our, our early diagnosis targets as set out in the long-term plan and the survival targets that we have, we know that we need to go much further and we need, know that we need to do more than that. So as the Secretary of State set out yesterday, the long-term plan is the next step in our mission to make the NHS the world-class employer and to deliver the, the cancer survival that we want. But to, to deliver on these commitments, we've asked Baroness Dido Harding, who's Chair of NHS Improvement, to chair a rapid programme of work for the Secretary of State. She will engage with staff, with employers, professional organisations, trade unions, the charities in this space, the think tanks, members in this house, all party groups, to build the workforce implementation plan that matches the ambition that is set out in the long-term plan. She will provide interim recommendations by the end of March to the Secretary of State on how the challenges of supply, reform, culture and leadership can be met, and then final recommendations later in the year around the spending review as part of the broader implementation plan that will be developed at all levels to make the long-term plan a reality. And, you know, the announcement... I, I've been asked by the gentleman introducing the debate and by a lot of people around the, the work of HEE and, and Baroness Harding. So the, the announcement of the long-term plan superseded HEE's plans to publish a longer-term cancer workforce plan. So they will now work with NHS England and Baroness Harding's NHSI under the plan being led by the Baroness to understand the longer work term workforce implications for the development of the plan. Um, as I said, March, full implementation plan published later in the year. Um, I didn't say soon. Um, <laughs> but I can't give the House an exclusive this morning. Um, the gentleman introduced me also talked about Sir Mike Richards' screening review. So, so that will make initial recommendations by Easter this year and finalised in the summer. Um, and as it says in the plan, I just, want to, I just want to quote this, I think it's important, to further improve the delivery of screen programmes, increase uptake, and I know that my shadow is concerned about that, me too, and learn the lessons from the recent issues around breast and cervical screening, um, and to modernise and expand diagnostic capacity. Well, I will, but people won't get their responses, so. Uh, uh, I'm grateful to the Minister for giving way. Will he agree that um, a crucial part of success in early diagnosis is for both the NHS and local authorities and their public health budgets 
to have specific strategies to engage with minority ethnic communities to raise awareness of cancer symptoms and to encourage them to take part in screening programmes. And that's an essential part of, of an effective strategy to improve treatment of cancer in this country. Yes, that's why this House gave all upper-tier local authorities the power to be effective public health authorities with ring-fenced public health budgets, £16 billion during the spending review period, and obviously decisions will be made about that going forward. But that's one of the reasons why we did that, because we believe, obviously, her borough will have different priorities and different demographics to mine in Hampshire. That's one of the reasons why, why we did that. Um, I, it, it is a matter of uh, statement of fact, Mr Howarth, that I'm clearly not going to get to respond to everybody's points in the short time that we've got. And I, and I will, as I always assiduously do, respond to everybody in writing the points they've made. So I'll try and take a few themes in the minutes that I've got. Uh, uh, the member for Easington, the member for Westmoreland, Lonsdale, to touched on radiotherapy. I very much enjoyed our, our meeting and, and thank them again for their work on that. The point here that the member for Easington made on tariffs, I'm going to send him a note about that in more detail because I know it's something that he and, and, his, and his colleague are concerned about. They talked about the... Um, the, the manifesto response. So, so we're awaiting publication of the new radiotherapy specification before we respond to the, to the manifesto, which I think is an excellent piece of work, as it will address many of the recommendations we, uh, that they made, and we expect this to be published very shortly. Uh, there's no, there is no commitment, I'm, I'm afraid to say, for a one-off investment in the LTP. However, it does commit, as he says, to improving access to safer and more precise medicines, including advanced radiotherapy. And th it is not the final word, what is published in that document. It is a living document, and it's a document that I'll be working on while listening to four party groups like his own. And, and he talked about the radiotherapy review. Well, you know, there was a res phenomenal response to NHS England's consultation, not, not surprisingly. Yes, a lot of them from the West Country of England. Um, but, uh, but, you know, they are, they'll plan through that, and, uh, and they know that I'm putting great pressure on them to publish their report uh, in response to that, which I'm, I'm hoping and told will be in early 2019. The lady from Central Ayrshire, um, otherwise known as a member for the Irish Sea, it's a body of water, um, talked talk about prevention and smoking and child obesity and humour, and I loved her poo in the post. Re refer, there's a great charity talking about men's bits called It's in the Bag, which is good in promoting uh, testicular cancer. Uh, I, I think you know, she's right to talk about prevention. I am the Minister of Public Health and Primary Care and Prevention, and I, I think the, the Secretary of State has made prevention one of his top three priorities. She knows that it is a key, key thing for me. Uh, yes, smoking is still the biggest preventable killer in our country today, as I said in the House last night around the SI debate. Uh, child obesity, you know, we have published a world-leading child obesity plan. We will consult very shortly. I'd hope to get it out before Christmas, but there's a lot else going on. And, and, and try to be honest with the House at all times. That there's an awful, awful lot else going on, and I can, there's only so much I can get out the door at one time, but I will get the 9pm watershed consultation out the door. I think it's damn important that we do that, and we said that we will, and we will. Um, but, but she's absolutely right, and prevention is better than cure, and that's why, with the Child Obesity Plan and Cancer Research UK's work in that space, has been very, very helpful. Can I just remind the Minister that he ought to leave a little bit of time for the uh, mover of the motion? Right. Okay. Well, then we, we, yeah, okay. Well, okay, Mr. Howarth. Well, then I will just I will have to close by, by saying that there is a lot of ambition in the long-term plan. That some people have very kindly said that I had something to do with that. Maybe so. But, but the ambition is matched by finances, and finances need to be matched by people. We understand that. We get that. But it is also about the much wider holistic approach to prevention and staff being part of that as well. So we get that, and I hope I've given some reassurances around the work that will be done with that. I will write to members with the rest of the points they raised, um, and I thank everybody for the incredible, passionate contributions, as usual, to this debate.